You deserve to play Super Mario Bros. Wonder, so today I'm recreating every full Mario Wonder level we've seen so far inside of Mario Maker 2. Mario Wonder starts with a great first level called Welcome to the Flower Kingdom. Mario becomes an elephant and does elephanty things like smash stuff and carry water in his trunk. Cause I'm a crazy person, I'm overlaying gameplay from the Nintendo Treehouse presentation and counting the exact number of squares between each element. Talking flowers, boom, donut blocks. Floating blue turnip thing, kapow! Ice block on a track. Sleeping Goombas, kablammo! Regular Goombas stomping the skulls of Monty Moles. I want to make these blocks appear, but only when Mario tastes the blue turnip. To do this, I add a thwomp setup above that can only smash down when Mario jumps in the perfect spot. Now Mario grabs the Mega Mushroom, but wait, a secret surprise? A giant Goomba stiletto also drops down to act like the trunk swing attack. This bonus took me hours, but it is so worth it. These pipes pop out of the ground and there's nothing like that in Mario Maker. Or is there? I try different ideas for over an hour and have to move everything in the level up higher to make it work. Now Mario steps on a winged blue platform on a track to make these bill blasters pop up from under the ground. Everything is going so great. Nothing can stop me now, right? Right? Well, the thing is, Nintendo gets unlimited space when making their levels, but I Nintendo don't. Yeah, all right, that was bad. I have to switch the subworld right after the checkpoint, but hey, adapt and overcome. The Wonder Flower effect makes me want to cry. Pipes that move up and down and dance around? I have my work cut out for me. I stick with my Bill Blaster friends and try a lot of different setups, but I am not happy. I eventually land on using P blocks that hold blasters above trampolines. When a P switch is stomped, the blasters drop and bounce up onto semi-solids. Note blocks on tracks make the blasters bounce one at a time, and the woozy sound effect makes it feel like the Wonder Flower is active. Oh baby, what about this wiggling pipe? This time, Bill Blasters sit on a semi-solid and wait for a platform on a track to bring them up. I create a specific path for the tracks to get similar movement to the wiggling pipe. This level was tough, but it's only the first of eight awesome courses I'm building today. You won't want to miss any of them. The next level is called Scram Skedaddlers, and it's completely based on a new enemy we don't have in Mario Maker 2. This squirrel birdo hybrid runs away but stops to shoot projectiles when at a safe distance. If you get close, it runs away again. So, what can I do to remake this enemy? I try using a Magikoopa on a Lakitu cloud, but it ends up charging at Mario. Maybe Yoshi can do something since he runs away when you take damage? But no. I go back into my old videos and dig up a super complicated setup to keep Lemmy moving away, but that would be a huge mess to try to recreate all across the level. But now, I got it! Spike enemies on tracks can definitely work. Wings make spike faster and I whip out the on-off tracks to help. Adding a thwomp contraption in the right spot makes Spike Daddler try to run away when Mario gets close. Everything I'm building is in the new Super Mario Bros. style, but now I am changing to the Super Mario Bros. 3 style for two reasons. First, Spike needs to throw his pointy orbs in a straight line, which is possible in the SMB3 style. And second, we need a way to use the elephant trunk swing, and I want to use the tanuki tail in this style. I love these big cheese barrel blocks that crumble and break. I'm using regular blocks to recreate them, as they can break too. To make it seem like the skedaddler is holding an item like a big coin or a wonder flower, I have to squeeze them together on separate tracks and make each of them fall onto a shared track. This wonder effect is so much simpler than the last one. Mario gains rainbow star powers and stars fall from the sky. So I add stars falling from the sky and woozy effects to last until he reaches the wonder seed. Our version is made from a POW block, so I decide to make a little bonus for throwing it in the right place. Because there's so much content in this level, I work hard to get the juiciest parts in. I add the bonus room and a hidden pipe, but because of how much is going on in the level, I'm not able to scroll stop it. You can kind of see it while playing the normal level, and that makes me sad. But I know I have to sacrifice some things to make this work. If you want to make sure Mario Maker 3 doesn't limit us in this way, subscribe and help this channel pass Nintendo of Italy. It's free, and it could help Nintendo notice and hire me. I need a break from these long levels. The first mini-level I'm tackling is called Trotten with Piranha Plants. Mario jumps up and destroys walking piranha plants by bonking his head into blocks underneath them. To start, I'm creating a scroll-stopped room and placing note blocks across the floor. Then, I'm adding a row of regular blocks up on the top. For the walking piranhas, I fuse Goombas with a piranha plant hat. 
Now it's time to copy it for a total of five enemy stacks. I grab a key and hide it inside the Goomrana and add a key door on the right of the room. When the enemies get bonked, delicious coins rain from the sky, so I add coins on tracks above to fall down over time. I also create the musical staff in the middle of the room using five tracks. Mario defeats the trotters, coins appear on the lines, and a musical jingle plays. To make this, I add a new room and place coins behind tracks. I add a 1-up in a claw as the Wonder Seed reward. Now that Mario isn't jumping in this room, I change the blocks into color variations to look more like the original. Now, it's time to add that jingle, but it's going to be way harder than it looks. I spend hours trying to make it play the way I want. I guarantee there's a better way to accomplish this, but here's how I'm doing it. Taking winged note blocks on tracks and placing them in the correct order makes them play the pitches we need. For you music nerds, I'm transposing the original melody up a fifth, but keeping the intervallic relationship between each pitch intact to fit inside this level. Each block falls onto a main track to hit a star to make our jingle. The rhythm isn't perfect, but after working for several hours, I'm satisfied. Time to tackle a big one. Jewel Block Cave shows off the awesome drill power-up and a new enemy, the conch. It seems obvious to use the underground theme for the cave, but I need to choose the game style carefully. I go with New Super Mario Bros. U for the propeller mushroom as it lets me spin like a drill both upward and downward. Then I slap a spiked shellman on top and now we're drilling. Drilling into the ground in this level is so awesome. I want Mario to disappear and be a dirt pile. The closest thing we can get is Mario using the propeller to kick down through blocks, crouch on a conveyor belt, and pop up when he reaches a hidden area. I also make it so he can helicopter up and slice blocks above him. Gameplay is feeling good, so let's move on to the baddies. Honestly, the conks are pretty much the same as a thwomp, so that's what we go with. Using them feels really similar. For the jewel crystal blocks, I want the look of ice blocks, but Mario needs to be able to break them too. So I settle for regular blocks to best match the gameplay. Some of these new conk enemies attack upward, but our primitive thwompies don't know how to do that. To pretend, I stack a thwomp on a rocky wrench, or a Monty Mole, depending on the situation, so that it gives the vibe that it's jumping up toward Mario. This wonder effect, man, if you've ever had nightmares about getting smushed, this is the one that will haunt you. A giant Kong fills the entire screen and races to destroy Mario as he frantically tries to make it to the bottom of the zone. How in the Waluigi am I going to do this one? I start with a vertical subworld to give Mario room to fall down a lot. I think it makes sense to have six big thwomps with parachutes together to act like the giant conch. I add ice blocks and regular blocks as the jewels. I am so excited to test it out and it fails miserably. Only one thwomp chases Mario and it just feels sad. In my head, the floor can explode and everything smashes down wreaking havoc, but in reality, none of that works. I try so many variations and fail for literal days. I ask my smartest Mario friends to help and come up with a complex solution where Mario is trapped in a hard block prison. The cage moves across and triggers all six thwomps at different times, so they eventually line up, but it just doesn't feel right. Enter my savior, Aristotle Discord server moderator, Pike. He shows me something so simple that works so well, and it makes me so angry. I almost wanted it to be impossible so that my time spent would be justified. After spending only five minutes to set up his method, everything looks and feels great. Everyone comments, I hate that Pike is such a genius below. I add a few more details to the level like placing inactive P-blocks for the light rays with the glory sound effect, and the level is ready. Jewel Block Cave induced enough stress, so to recover, I'm making the Wall Climbing Badge Challenge next. This level lets Mario jump off of walls in a new way where he can jump upward once while on the wall before jumping off and away from it. I immediately set my juicy brain to the task of making the ultimate wall climb setup and have an idea of something really cool to try. A trick exists in the Super Mario Bros. style where you can move Bill Blasters to cover up a bridge, but Mario can still somehow stand on that bridge. I want so badly to use this idea, but it's impractical to set this up everywhere, so I scrap it. After going through all five stages of grief, I land on using conveyor belts and the squirrel suit from the new Super Mario Bros. style. I also go with the sky theme as it has the perfect colorful semi-solids to feel like the original level. 
I overlap conveyor belts that Squirrel Mario can cling to with a bridge to give him an extra vertical jump, and it works pretty darn well. A bill blaster on a track becomes the shifting wall, and I slap a donut block on a square of tracks to make the rotating block. I throw in the big coins as the extra challenge, and sweet, sweet success. Five levels down, but the next three in the world maps will be tough. Bull Rush coming through is wacky and fun, and introduces another new Mario enemy, the Bull Rush. This bull charges at Mario and can smash through hard blocks, but also can be used as a platform in some cases. That's probably going to make things impossible. To start, I use big thwomps for the charging and smashy mechanics. I use key coins in place of the purple coins, because that's the best I can do, but I make sure that they're completely optional to collect. This level has really cool trees that Mario can ground pound to lower. I need to figure out a way to recreate those. I try many strange ideas until I settle on a wing blue platform on a track. Let's skip ahead to the wonder effect. This one is super creative and makes me so excited for Mario Wonder's potential. Bull rushes create a stampede and make a moving platform train. This line of enemies flies through the level into the sky and back onto the floor several times. How in Bowser's fire breath am I gonna do this one? I start with Buzzy Beetle shells coming out of Bill Blasters. I know Mario can stand on the shells as a ride without taking damage. I figure out a setup where an on-off block gets triggered to start the Bull Rush Stampede, and trampolines fall from out of view onto pre-arranged two-state blocks. Now Mario stands back and enjoys the ride. In the original level, the Bull Rush Stampede powers through the flagpole, completely destroying it. It's so cool, but we have nothing like that. Instead, I make a fake flagpole with a checkpoint, tracks, and a brick block. Then slap a thwomp where it shatters ice and hard blocks to create falling debris as if it's breaking. A cool new enemy which we don't know the name of yet hovers in the stampede's path. I recreate these by using chain chomps on tracks. I try to make sure they're destroyed by the stampede, or at least don't hit Mario, but sorry in advance if it happens. Then I make cloudy secret areas near the top of the level, but don't want to spoil how to reach them. I add a 1-up as the Wonder Seed, and finish things out with a cloud run and a happy poplin friend at the end. Before I can be truly satisfied with the levels, there's one thing I'm missing. Right here you can see a poplin shop where Mario goes to trade his dinner for items. I must give Mario the chance to shop so I get down to business. I scroll stop the starting area, a middle room, and the ending room. There's no real way to get Mario to spend money in levels, so I give him a trampoline as currency. Plus, he wants to eat those coins later anyway. It would just be ridiculous to eat the trampoline. I make a little contraption that Mario can drop a trampoline into, and it pops up whatever item he likes to buy. He can only choose one item as his trampoline money gets caught in the machine. In the original Poplin Shop, you can get a coin magnet badge, 1-ups, and a standee. My version will have a POW block, 1-ups, and a P-switch to choose from. In the final room, Mario can use his items for a reward. Big scrumptious coins drop with the POW block, but the P-switch gives him bite-sized coins and a chance to hit the top of the gold bowl. As a finishing touch, I decorate the shop room to explain that the trampoline is the money and add the word shop on the first screen to make it feel like you're going into, you guessed it, a room. You thought I was done, didn't you? Not yet. Now I need the world map to connect all these courses together. The levels are split into two areas in the demo, so I make World 1 for the grassy levels, and then World 2 for the rest. I set the lives to 5 based on the footage I've seen, and get to work. It's really tough to make the first area look like Mario Wonder with the limited features of Mario Maker 2's world creator, but I mess around with pathways and decorations until it looks good. I realize you can't just have a way to walk to the next world unless you beat the final course of a world, so I make a special level just to act like this flying flower animation. I quickly craft a course where Mario flies up with the propeller to act like he's holding onto the flower. Then he comes down slowly in the next world, which has a desert feel, so I put it in the desert theme. Slow fall on a platform on a track. Wahoo, it's done. The second world was tougher. Mario Wonder lets us walk freely in this open area, but we don't have anything like that in Mario Maker 2. I use as many tiles with maximum paths as possible to make it feel like Mario can go anywhere. Then I place the levels in places that are similar to the original worlds. I have to decide on one level to be the castle, even though we haven't seen the true castle just yet. I pick Jewel Block Cave and make sure the player can visit the levels in any order. Then I add decorations to match the world as much as possible, even though I only have four choices in Mario Maker 2. Now that we've built it, here comes the fun part. Grab your Nintendo Switch, boot up Mario Maker 2, and let's play this full thing together. 
The full Two World experience is already uploaded and can be found using my Maker ID which is on screen now. I will show the levels side by side with the demo version using video footage from Game Explain and Nintendo Treehouse. I hope you enjoy my several weeks of hard work and let me know in the comments which level is your favorite.